How's it going guys? It is Christmas Eve, so Merry Christmas Eve, although it is currently after 10 o'clock at night, so by the time you're watching this, it'll probably be Christmas Day, so Merry Christmas Day. But since it's Christmas, I figured it's a good time to talk about something I care about, something I love. So in this video, I'm going to talk about Arsenal, the team that I love, to absolutely abuse at every given opportunity. Arsenal are, of course, playing the boys in blue, Chelsea, on December 26th. And Chelsea's form of late, been a bit iffy, but absolutely nothing compared to the downward spiral that Arsenal have been on. They're in 15th place in the league. They have been dragged, officially I'm saying, into a relegation scrap. So I'm going to use this video to talk about could Arsenal Football Club actually get relegated this season? Arsenal actually started the season pretty well. I mean, they brushed Fulham aside and then they managed to get a good win against West Ham. Then they went and lost to Liverpool, Manchester City and Leicester with only a win against Sheffield United sandwiched between all that. And people were saying, well, how can you really be in a race for top four if you can't beat any of the other teams in that race? So they went and they beat Man United 1-0 at Old Trafford. And that kind of changed people's tune a bit because at first everyone was calling it a tactical masterclass from Mikel Arteta, myself included. But looking back on it, it was a fluke. I mean, United were awful on the day. They didn't turn up. Um, even then, it took a clumsy, soft penalty for them to get that winning goal. Uh, Gabriel should have been sent off. So yeah, different day. Definitely could have gone very differently there. In the next seven games, they only managed to get two points on the board. They lost to Aston Villa, Wolves, Spurs, Ernley, Everton. The only points they managed to get were the two that they pretty much stole slash sneaked away from Leeds and Southampton. So all in all, going into this game against Chelsea, even at the Emirates, doesn't exactly look good for them. They do follow this game with matches against the likes of Brighton, West Brom, Crystal Palace. So, you know, on paper, they look like good opportunities for them to get back on track. But, I mean, right about now, you wouldn't want to bet anything on it because Arsenal are a team in crisis. There's calls for the manager to be sacked, wholesale changes to be made to the squad. But right about now, I don't see anything being changed that could save their season. I mean... The only thing they can do right now is just not get relegated. Well, no, they could win the Europa League. I mean, just imagine a championship club playing Champions League football next season. That's just ridiculous and not going to happen. Not because Arsenal aren't going to get relegated, because they're not going to win the Europa League. Anyway, one of Arsenal's big issues is that Mikel Arteta seems to fancy himself as this tactical prodigy and... It's not just for the big games. Every single game that they go into, even against feckin' Dundalk United, they acted as if they needed a master plan to win the game. There was no just go and express yourselves. It's always rigid formations and tracking back and doing your job. And yes, again, that's important when you're playing a team that maybe could walk over you if you don't put contingency plans in place. But for the most part, when you're playing against teams in the bottom 10 of the Premier League and you're a team with top four, top six aspirations, you have to play with freedom. You have to assert yourself in the game, assert yourself to your rivals that you're a threat because you can play football. And Mikel Arteta just isn't letting his players do that. I'm not saying they would do it anyway, because looking at that Arsenal squad, it is fairly void in creativity. But still, he's stifling them and... I think the sooner he goes, the better for Arsenal. Speaking of creativity, there is one player that is technically still an Arsenal player that I think could really help them in this situation. Probably not save them, but definitely help. And that's Mesut Ozil. I mean, I would love to know, is, is Ozil banging Arteta's wife or something? Because there has to be a reason, a genuine reason at this point, that he is not being put into that squad. You can't look at the regular starting 11s that Arsenal are putting out and say that he deserves to start ahead of Ozil, Chabayas deserved to start ahead of Ozil, Pepe, Willian, any of them, none of them deserve to start ahead of Ozil because Arsenal aren't a threat going forward, they're not creating chances, they're not scoring goals, it's not just the striker's fault, it's a lack of creativity in the team and that is literally Mesut Ozil through and through 
Put the guy on. Don't ask him to bloody defend. Ask him to unlock defences. He'll do it. He'll do it with his eyes closed. Even after, what, a year or so of not really playing football, he's still better than half. No, he's still better than 95% of those Arsenal players. And in one game, I think he would prove it. So, again, wouldn't save their season to the degree that they would want, that Arsenal fans would want, bringing Mesut Ozil back in. But it definitely wouldn't hurt, and I think the sooner the better. Okay, I know I just said that it's not necessarily the strikers' fault that they're not scoring goals, but it's not entirely true because combined, Lacazette and Aubameyang are Arsenal's top scorers in the league with six goals between them. That's as much as Kurt Zuma and Thiago Silva have. So yes, Arsenal, they're not creating a whole lot of chances, but we're going into game week 15 and Arsenal Football Club's two big name, big money strikers have six goals between them. I mean, it's baffling. There was the whole situation with the contract of Aubameyang. Will he sign? Will he won't sign? Worst kept secret in all of football that he was going to sign. But in the aftermath of that, he's just turned off entirely. I mean, he got what? A penalty against Man United. He then managed to scuff a goal home against Southampton it's not good enough and I love Aubameyang he's a top class striker I actually kind of like Alex Lacazette too I don't think he's quite at the same standard as Aubameyang is but he's definitely at a higher standard than three Premier League goals in 14 games um, Arsenal maybe need to bring in a striker well they probably do need to bring in a striker I'm not too sure who would want to sign for them but Really, they just need to get some confidence into those two boys. I mean, when you see Eddie and Ketia starting ahead of you, surely that has to be a kick up the ass. It hasn't been so far for them. Aubameyang needs to stop being dumped out in the wing. I think that is ludicrous. Asking Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang to track back for 85 minutes of the game. No bullshit. Let him attack. Let him score your goals. Use his pace. Use his skills. He's being wasted, but... He also has to make the most of the time he has on the pitch, which he's not doing. So you got to point some fingers there as well. Um, Lacazette has never been overly prolific for Arsenal, but he has been better under previous managers in previous seasons than he is now. So definitely, again, something to do with the Mikel Arteta regime that isn't helping them there. You think what I've said so far is bad. You ain't heard nothing yet because it's time to move on to that Arsenal defence. Arsenal's backline for most of this season has been the Bert Leno show. He's the only reason they've managed to stay in anywhere near touching distance of getting results in games. Uh, shocked around Muscafi. Uh, you know what? I'm not even going to correct that because he's not worthy of saying the name right. He's not worthy of packing my bags in Tesco. David Luiz, love you, but you're past it. Gabriel, for a couple of games this season, had people saying, yes, he is the answer. He's not the answer. Hector Bellerin, must, uh, not Mustafi, we've already given about you. Um, Hector Bellerin and Kolasinac look about as interested at being at the club as a lobster is interested in being thrown to a pot to be boiled alive. Uh, who else am I missing? Maitland Niles, he's been all right. Kieran Tierney, he's probably been Arsenal's best player this season, along with Bert Leno. I won't give out about you. Kieran Tierney, you're doing okay. That Arsenal defence, though, on the whole, is incompetent. I mean, the mistakes you're seeing from them, the own goals. Oh, speaking of own goals, Rob Holding. Yeah, you've looked okay from time to time, but own goals are clearly an issue for you. You're not up the other end of the pitch. Um, Arsenal need wholesale changes across the back line. They need, well, like I said, Kieran Tierney. Tierney, you're okay. Everyone else, you're gone. Go, get lost. You're not worthy of playing in League 2. Um... Retire if you're David Luiz's age. Quit football if you're younger than that. But I'm really not sure what centre-backs are in the market at the moment. But whoever is there, Arsenal just need to take the gamble and snatch them up. Because basically anything is better than what they have at the moment. And okay, it doesn't help that for the most part they're being protected by Granit Xhaka in midfield. Xhaka is like a Labrador in the middle of the pitch you know he's just happy to be there happy to be there and then he gets a bit over excited and barges someone over i mean that basically sums him up he's terrible <laughs> at a holding midfielder um but 
yeah, he's not the only issue because problems do extend into the back line. If Bert Leno and Kieran Tierney were to get injured, they probably would be as low down the table as poor old Sheffield United are. I will mention Thomas Partey. I thought he was a great signing for them when they brought him in. Unfortunately, he's been injured for them for the last few games, but not really an excuse because he wasn't missing all of them. I'm pretty sure he played against Spurs. I think that was the game he got injured in, but they were already losing when he went off. Um, He played against Aston Villa. He played against Wolves, against Leeds. So not really a massive excuse there, but he might help them out when he comes back to full fitness. Um... The other big name signing they brought in was Willian. I'm a big fan of Willian's, loved him at Chelsea, but I wasn't necessarily upset when they let him go because the money we were going to have to spend on him in wages was just a lot. I mean, I think it was going to be 36 million on a winger. That's going to be 35, 36 by the time that three year contract ends. It's a Big, big sum of money. And I know we did just bring in Thiago Silva, who is 36, but he's a defender. He's a centre-back. He's allowed to be old and have lost his pace a bit. Williams, a winger, and he did start really well for them, but he's died off entirely in recent games. And it's not like the likes of Nico Pepe have been picking up the slack. Um, So, yeah, Thomas Partey has been missed for them, but I don't think he solves everything when he comes back. Okay, so the real question in this video is, can slash will Arsenal get relegated this season? And I'm saying absolutely, yes, they can. I mean, if you look at the table, they're 15th. The teams below them are, what, Brighton, Burnley, Fulham, West Brom, Sheffield United. I think without hesitation, you can say that Fulham and Burnley are only a couple of games away from overtaking Arsenal on current form. Brighton, results not really going their way. But again, they're definitely playing better football than Arsenal are. So that just leaves Sheffield and West Brom. Sheffield, I'm sorry to say, are on a one-way track down to the championship. West Brom look like they're heading the same way. They were starting to perform a bit better and then... Slavin Bilic gets fired. They've lost their only game since. Very hard to judge. Let's just assume for now that they're going to get relegated. That still leaves one last spot in the relegation zone. And right now, I can't see anyone deserving it more than Arsenal. I mean, they're not scoring goals, not keeping clean sheets, not playing with any fire, creativity, passion. Tactics are off in almost every single game. So yeah, Arsenal to get relegated why the hell not and now that i've said all this they're probably gonna go and smash chelsea on the weekend just to lend me with egg on my face chelsea please god do not let that happen but comment below do you agree or disagree as i'm sure a whole lot of arsenal fans will like if you did enjoy subscribe for more footy chats and hopefully i'll see you all in the next video